now that Lobcon is finally released, we've started to see some of the first unofficial tournaments hosted over at competitive Discord servers. Um, so we've had two tournaments already, and I'm going to share with you both of the winning deck lists and then the top four from the first, since the second tournament didn't share all their deck lists. Had some really interesting results, a lot of uh, unknown kind of decks lurking around, which could have a lot of potential. So let's get straight into the first deck. So first place for the first tournament, we saw Steel Amethyst take first place. Now, I haven't even heard of this concept yet. I haven't seen anyone test it out. So it's crazy to me that this one uh, is by the player, the real Mickey Mouse, who has been in the Pixelborn server, which I'll leave both the Discord servers in the description. Always popping up, I think was one of the first people to pioneer the Ruby Amethyst control, which is now considered to be the best deck. And it's quite a controversial take, but I think it is. Uh, the first thing that stands out to me in this deck list is the Sorcerer Mickey and the Broom package. I guess just having the recursion of the brooms early game is just really solid for the deck. Um, you'll see this combo a lot in these next decks as well, um, so maybe it's something that I've personally been sleeping on. We see two Captain Hooks for the early game, Prince Eric which is just a good 2 drop, 3 uh, drop left since draw some cards, Rafiki is just insane rush control on the board, and then we see the 3-4 Tinkerbell shift line, Hand Jafar which is good, and then Queen to draw cards, and then we see 4 of Beast which this card removes item cards, and item cards seem to be quite prevalent, especially in uh, a lot of Amethyst Ruby control decks currently. Uh, and there are some combos with item cards that are just so good that I reckon the Beast will definitely be a really strong tech card and just will push Steel further into the meta, especially with Tinkerbell it just being such a strong card. I feel like Steel is kind of being underrated right now. We see two Ursulas, which actually draw a card and kind of slows the opponent down by taking a lore off of them. Four Elsas, which can just stun the opponent. Keep in mind these last two cards quest for free, so once you get control of the board, you can start questing really, really quickly. Uh, and then we see four Smashes for the board control. I think it's better than Fire the Cannon. Three is just a much better number, because you see cards like Pongo pop up quite a lot that have two health, whereas Smash can kill them. And uh, Fire the Cannon is also uninkable, so there's that. We see four friends on the other side, which is just draw two cards. We're just seeing the insane draw package at Amethyst really pop off at the start of this uh, competitive lore kind of scene. Uh, we see four grab your swords, just a fantastic board clear. It's kind of what Steel's good at. So uh, we see Ruby Amethyst quite a lot uh, because they've got that board control with the Dragonfire and the Be Prepared. But I guess the Tinkerbell and the grab your sword combo is just as strong, if not probably better. And then we see three magic mirrors to just draw some cards. Uh, and free uh, pocket watches to give your cards a rush. So overall, really strong list, uh, and one that I've not seen, I've not tested, and I'm really intrigued to see what this uh, Mickey Broom combo is like. Um, so that was the first place list for the first lockout tournament. Now I've got the first place list for the second tournament, which is, no surprise, Ruby Amethyst. This is Slay, uh, featured some of their decks in the meta decks for day one, and it was just, uh, I think they were ranked free at the time, so I just got all their lists and put it into a video. Um, but yeah, once again we see this Mickey Mouse Magic Broom combo, which uh, I thought was just going to be a kind of strong starter deck strategy, but I guess it's just a really strong early game strategy for the whole game basically. We see a 4-2 Archimedes and Surgeon Tibbs, I guess just a strong 1 drop, 2-2 two -two is fine. And then we see 3 Brooms, which can also um, stop you from decking out, there's a kind of mill deck that's going about at the moment, which is uh, countering control, and I guess using the broom to add cards back to your deck is just going to stop you decking out and then you can recur, recur that with Mickey and then just not deck out which is quite good. Now we see the food which can ready your characters which is really good I've noticed. It kind of gives your cards like a budget kind of evasive if you ready them back up after they quest. Again we see the uh, free costs of Maleficent and Rafiki, just really strong cards. We see four Aladdins which can slow your opponent down by stealing some of their lore. Two of the, the Sorcerer Mickeys and then we see four Pongos. Uh, and this is interesting because we also see three evasive goofies so you can kind of go on the offense with these cards and play an offensive kind of game plan where the opponent can't deal with evasives or if your opponent's playing evasives you can use these cards to trade into their evasives to stick to that control plan and then we see four queens again to draw cards once again just amethyst just drawing so many cards making sure you can kind of get what you need and we see four maui's just an insane card big stats and good keywords then we see four Aladdins, which you can shift onto the other ones, which will steal some lore when he uh, banishes an opponent character. Four Elsas again for that stun. Four Evasive Mickeys, just a really good late game card. And then if they can't deal with it, you just kind of are stuck there basically. Uh, and you can quest for a lot of points. Then we see four of the Maleficents. Built-in Dragonfire is just always strong. Uh, and it's on a big unit, which can quest for two. And then of course we have four Dragonfires, a staple in the Ruby at the moment. And then we have the four friends on the other side. 
uh, just again card draw, same with four magic mirrors, just again card draw, full be prepared. So you just want to control the board to a late game and then just uh, spam your evasives out and then um, you should be able to win the game that way. It has a really good matchup against a lot of the current decks that people are playing. So that were the two winning lists for the tournaments. So now we're going to the second place, which was Ruby Emerald Evasive. I feel like Evasive's kind of being slept on right now. Um, this deck in particular is missing out on one of the most broken combos in the game, in my opinion, which is the Shield. It's the shield of Virtue and Cusco. You can quest with Cusco and then you can use the shield to ready up Cusco again. And because he has Ward, there is nothing in the game other than I think be prepared that can banish him. Obviously your opponent can play two grab swords, but that's 10 ink and they're spending two grab swords and you can just play another Cusco. But you can also do that with the Lafu, which we see at two cost. Uh, so we play two Duke of Wesseltons, just a standard one drop, four Mini Mouses. Now this is really interesting because there's no one cost that can trade into Mini Mouse. So you can get two quests off with this before it gets banished, which is um, a really interesting kind of thing to think about when you're playing against this deck. Four Cruella is just good for that early game kind of control. Four Flynn Riders, really annoying card, quest for two and discard a card from your opponent's hand when they uh, attack into it. Three Cheshire Cats, uh, again just super annoying, it trades itself out and can quest for two, so you're questing for a lot. Jasper, which is really good, when it quests it can stop one of your opponent's characters from questing. It's really good against um, Sapphire decks basically, so the aerial kind of combo decks you can stop that and then if they have like a bell which can quest for five, you can just stop that as well. Let me just have the evasive package like Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, Pongo, Goofy, Maui and Genie for the mid game board control. I made a video on this deck yesterday, it's a really good deck actually. I think it would be uh, quite more, uh, quite a bit more dominant than we initially thought it would be. We see two John Silvers, which is again good for that late game kind of control of not letting your opponent quest. Four Tiggers and then three Mother Snow's Best. So overall quite a good list, uh, probably one of the best aggro decks that we'll see for the, at least the first set. In the third place we got Ruby Amphist again. Um, so, and it's also running a broom package, so I think just Amphist, um, if you're not running brooms, maybe you should try it out because it seems to be pretty good. But other than that, it's kind of a similar list. We see um, four Donalds instead of whatever two drops the other deck had. But um, yeah, this is more of like a standard list with brooms. Um, Want to do the same thing, just really good control, draw a lot of cards, and uh, yeah, don't deck out. In fourth place we got Steel Emerald. Now this is kind of like a mid-range kind of package. So you still want to have like the strong early game of Emerald and you've got the uh, like early game board control of um, the Tinkerbell shift. So you're gonna run a free two Tinkerbell line and then you wanna just transition into the uh, the Cuscos and the Mad Hatters to just quest for a lot basically. Um, and then you won't be running you won't be running out of cards because you've got whole new world. So I guess you can kind of go for like a game plan of like if you're playing against control, you can try deck them out maybe. It might be a bit cheeky, but you try that out and then other than that just kind of stick to your mid-game aggressive board control. So yeah, those were the those were five deck lists from the first two tournaments. Uh, I'm quite surprised by the winner, especially the first place one here. Uh, I'm definitely going to play test this now. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think brooms are going to be just a meme or you think they will kind of take over and come out of nowhere and surprise a lot of people? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching. There'll be a deck guide on this deck very soon uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.